Eokia cilia was the one of the earliest known relatives of these bizarre amphibians. About 15 centimeters long, it still had small limbs with three digits each and fairly well-developed eyes, and closely resembled some of the earlier lepospondyls like microsaurs and lycerophians. It may or may not have been descended from one of these groups, and without more fossil evidence we can't know for certain either way. It wasn't as highly adapted for burrowing as its modern relatives, but instead may have moved around under leaf litter and in shallow sandy soil like some similarly shaped modern lizards. Sicilian are a group of limbless, vermiform amphibians. They mostly live hidden in soil or in streambeds and this cryptic lifestyle renders Sicilian among the least familiar amphibians. They feed on small subterranean creatures such as earthworms. The body is cylindrical and often darkly colored, and the skull is bullet-shaped and strongly built. Kisilian heads have several unique adaptations, including fused cranial and jaw bones, a two-part system of jaw muscles and a chemosensory tentacle in front of the eye. The skin is slimy and bears ring-like markings or grooves, which may contain tiny scales. The study of Kisilian evolution is complicated by their poor fossil record and specialized anatomy. Genetic evidence and some anatomical details support the idea that frogs, salamanders, and Sicilian are each other's closest relatives. Frogs and salamanders show many similarities to Dysaurophoids, a group of extinct amphibians in the order Temnospondyli. Sicilian are more controversial, many studies extend Dysaurophoid ancestry to Sicilian. Anuolerpatin was the earliest known member of this group, with fossils dating to the Middle Jurassic and Early Cretaceous. Although only known from fragmentary material it would have been similar in size to other albinerpatontids, probably no more than about 8 cm long. Unlike most living lysamphibians, albinerpatontids also had numerous tiny fish-like bony scales under their skin, similar to those seen in some Paleozoic amphibians. most notable feature of albanerpetin was their body being covered in a mosaic of small scales, although unlike reptile scales these were bony structures formed under a layer of skin, structurally much more like fish scales, and they probably weren't particularly visible in life. They also had very flexible necks for amphibians, with a convergently mammal-like joint between their skull and vertebrae. Batrachosauroids were probably fully aquatic, living in wetlands with slow-moving currents, and the structure of their jaws suggests they were active predators that would have fed on other smaller animals in the water. It was one of the largest of the Batrachosauroids, similar in size to modern amphiomas at around 1 meter long. Japanese clawed salamander is known to live at elevations up to 1,000 meters, and favors thickly vegetated stretches of pebble-bottomed mountain streams, with little direct sunlight. It may also be found near underground springs. The mating season is from mid-March to mid-May. The eggs are laid in streams, the aquatic larvae emerge after approximately five weeks. It is threatened by habitat change, such as tree felling in stream headwaters.
Japanese giant salamanders are indeed giants among amphibians. They can reach lengths of up to 1.5 meters, although individuals of this size are relatively rare. Some individuals have been reported to live for more than 50 years in captivity. These salamanders are primarily aquatic and are usually found in clean, cold, fast-flowing mountain streams and rivers in Japan. They prefer well-oxygenated water and are particularly sensitive to water pollution. They have poor eyesight and primarily rely on their sense of smell and vibration-sensitive cells on their skin to locate prey. They have a wrinkled, slimy and wrinkled appearance, with loose skin that aids in respiration through the skin. Their coloration varies but is typically brown or gray with dark spots. In Japan, the Japanese giant salamander is legally protected, and it's considered a national treasure. It's illegal to capture or harm them without proper permits. Frosted flatwood salamanders have a unique reproductive strategy. They typically breed in isolated, fish-free, seasonal ponds during the winter months when the ponds are full of water. After laying their eggs, the adults return to upland habitats. The aquatic larvae develop in the ponds, and metamorphose into terrestrial adults once the ponds begin to dry up. Its population has been declining due to habitat destruction and degradation. Protecting and restoring their breeding and foraging habitats is critical for their survival. Unlike most amphibians, the axolotl remains aquatic throughout its entire life. It does not undergo metamorphosis, as seen in frogs and other salamanders, and retains its juvenile characteristics throughout adulthood. This phenomenon is known as neotini. Axolotls are renowned for their exceptional regenerative capabilities. They can regrow lost limbs, spinal cord, heart tissue, and even parts of their brain. This ability has made them a subject of extensive scientific research. One of its most distinctive features is their external gills, which resemble feathery tufts on either side of their heads. These gills allow them to extract oxygen from the water, making them well suited to their permanently aquatic lifestyle. The draining and contamination of their native lake system have significantly reduced their natural habitat. Fire salamanders are easily recognizable by their striking black skin with contrasting yellow or orange markings. The colors and patterns can vary among individuals, but they typically have a distinctive look. They are mostly nocturnal and spend much of their daytime hours hiding in damp crevices or under rocks to avoid desiccation. They are known for their toxic skin secretions. These secretions contain a potent neurotoxin called samandarin which serves as a defense mechanism against predators. It can cause irritation or harm if it comes into contact with mucous membranes or open wounds. These salamanders have been studied extensively by scientists due to their interesting biology, including their skin toxins, and their role as indicators of environmental health in their habitats. Himalayan newts are primarily aquatic and are often found in slow-moving or still bodies of water, including ponds, streams, and small lakes. They are proficient swimmers. They have a unique reproductive behavior. Males have a slenderer body and a distinct dorsal crest during the breeding season. During courtship, the male deposits a spermatophore on the substrate, which the female picks up with her cloaca to fertilize her eggs. Eastern newts are highly sensitive to changes in their environment and are able to detect and respond to changes in water quality and temperature. This sensitivity allows them to thrive in a variety of habitats, but it also makes them vulnerable to environmental changes and pollution. In fact, eastern newts are considered a sensitive species, meaning that they are often used as indicators of ecosystem health. When populations of eastern newts decline, it can be a sign of environmental stress or degradation. They are ectothermic, 
relying on external sources of heat to regulate their body temperature. They exhibit social hierarchy, with dominant individuals exhibiting aggressive behaviors toward subordinates. This social hierarchy is thought to be related to the distribution of resources, with dominant individuals having access to more food and better mating opportunities. There are glandular ridges along the back of the Bosca's newt and the skin is granular in texture when the newt is living out of water. The body is brownish, yellowish, or dull green with dark spotting. The belly is orange. Unlike some of its congeners, this species is not especially showy during the breeding season. The male develops a brightly colored protuberance at the tip of the tail. The newt skins are dry and velvety when they are living on land, but become smooth when they migrate into the water to breed. Males develop a more vivid color pattern and a conspicuous skin seam on their back when breeding. It was originally described by Carl Linnaeus as a lizard, and was then given different genus names before the adoption of its current classification as a member of Lysotretin. For most of the year, smooth newts live on land, are mostly nocturnal, and hide during the day. They can adapt to a wide range of natural or semi-natural habitats, from forests at field edges to parks and gardens. They feed mainly on invertebrates such as insects and earthworms and are themselves eaten mainly by fish, birds, and snakes. The Pyrenean brook salamander sometimes estivates in hot weather in the lower parts of its range. It hibernates in winter on land at higher altitudes, emerging in the spring. During courtship, the male displays his brightly colored underparts before grasping the female around the loins with his tail and transferring one to four spermatophores directly into her cloaca in a process that lasts several hours. The female lays 20 to 40 eggs over the course of a few weeks, sticking them to rocks or inside crevices with her extensible cloaca. The northern crested newt spends most of the year on land, mainly in forested areas in lowlands. It moves to aquatic breeding sites, mainly larger fish-free ponds, in spring. Males develop a conspicuous jagged crest on their back and tail during the breeding season. Males court females with a ritualized display and deposit a spermatophore on the ground, which the female then picks up with her cloaca. After fertilization, a female lays around 200 eggs, folding them into water plants. Both larvae and land-dwelling newts mainly feed on different invertebrates. Japanese fire-bellied newts are characterized by their distinctive coloration, which includes a bright orange to red belly, contrasting with a dark brown or black dorsal side. This coloration serves as a warning to potential predators, as the bright belly indicates their toxicity. Like many other newt species, they possess toxic skin secretions. The toxins they produce can be harmful to potential predators if ingested or if the skin secretions come into contact with mucous membranes. Their diet primarily consists of small aquatic invertebrates, such as insects, crustaceans, and worms. They are sit and wait predators, using their long, sticky tongues to capture prey. Chinese fire belly newt is commonly seen in pet stores, where it is frequently confused with the Japanese fire belly newt due to similarities in size and coloration. Chinese fire belly newt typically exhibits smoother skin and a rounder tail than the Japanese one, and has less obvious parotoid glands. It is native to subtropical forests in China and prefers to live in shallow, semi-aquatic environments such as abandoned paddies and ponds with dense vegetation. Noose River water dogs are relatively large, robust salamanders with a cylindrical body shape. It is an endemic species, meaning it is found exclusively within a particular geographic region. Its range is limited to the Noose River Basin in North Carolina, particularly in the eastern part of the state. 
These salamanders have several sensory adaptations that help them locate prey in low-light aquatic environments. These include the sensory barbels near the mouth and chemoreceptors on their skin. The ulm is entirely adapted to subterranean life and has lost its pigmentation, making it entirely pale and almost translucent. It is completely blind due to its lack of functional eyes. They are among the longest living amphibians, with some individuals living for over a century. Their slow metabolism, low energy requirements and the stable cave environment contribute to their longevity. They retain their external gills throughout their entire life. These frilly external gills are used for respiration and resemble a feathery collar around their neck. Olms have an unusual reproductive strategy. Females lay eggs in aquatic cavities within the cave system. The male then guards the eggs until they hatch into aquatic larvae. During the day, amphiomas hide in vegetation, and at night they become active hunters. Their prey includes frogs, snakes, fish, crustaceans, insects and even other amphiomas. Hunting and eating habits have been observed to be very similar to that of the axolotl, including the sucking in of food by their stomachs with vacuum force. If provoked, they can become aggressive. They can be found in most wetlands in the coastal plain of the southeastern United States, even ones which periodically dry out, as they are able to estivate in the moist mud below drained marshland and other ephemeral wetlands. Amphiomas are rarely encountered on land. Amphioma possess relatively ancestral forms of lungs compared to some of the other groups of salamanders that live terrestrially today. Their lungs are long organs, extending over half of the body length, with dense capillary networks and large surface area that suggest the utilization of the entire lung for respiration while the animal is in water or on land. Although it is common for amphibia to respire out of their skin, also known as cutaneous respiration, it was found that amphioma primarily respire through their lungs, despite their aquatic lifestyle. Worm salamander inhabits humid premontane and lower montane forests where it lives in leaf litter, under decaying logs, and in moss banks. It can, however, withstand significant habitat modification, and has also been found in pastures, gardens and even cities. It is generally not threatened by habitat loss. Dusky salamanders are known for their territorial behavior. They defend specific areas within their home range, and intruding salamanders are met with aggressive posturing and even physical combat. Like many other salamander species, they communicate with each other using chemical signals. They can detect chemical cues in the environment, which helps them locate prey, find mates, and identify territory boundaries. Like many amphibians, they are considered indicators of ecosystem health. Changes in their populations can reflect broader environmental changes and potential threats to other species in their habitat. By feeding on small invertebrates, including insects, these salamanders help control populations of potential agricultural and forest pests, which can be beneficial to ecosystems and humans alike. <laughs>